Welcome to Retire Coast's first educational course. The title of this course is Generation X Retirement Strategies. My name is Bill Anderson. I will be your guide through the entire course. We'll be covering a lot of ground in this course. And this course's intention is that when you finish, you'll be in very good condition to complete your retirement plan. Now the object of the course is to have you work on your retirement plan while you take the course. It's at your own speed. It's an audio-visual online course. You can stop and start. There are questions. There are no bad answers. The answers are just to help you along and give us some input on what we can do to refine the course, add more things to it, more questions, so, uh, express something in more depth, uh, so as we get feedback from people that take the course, we'll be able to constantly improve the course. And once you buy that course, you can go back into it. So as we add things to the course, we'll notify you and say, for example, we've added another chapter or we've added another lesson or we've added something, uh, a tool. And you'll be able to go back and cover that. So you now know what our goal is, and I believe that your goal probably should be the same, and that is to retire well. So let me just give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about in the course. This is the introduction, so it doesn't really mean a lot in terms of educational value, except I hope that it entices you to take the course as we kind of lay out what the syllabus looks like. We're going to talk a lot about the budget. And normally I wouldn't like to get into the budget right up front, but considering how important the budget is, and we're never going to be too far away from it anyway, because nearly everything deals with money, unfortunately, but money is not the only thing. I want to get that across now. We're going to be talking about a lot of other topics they will all tie to money, but they're not necessarily the same thing. One of those topics, for example, and I will be expounding on this in an entire lesson, and that is about the real estate that you own, where you live now. Is it possible that there is some place that will reduce your cost of living, improve your lifestyle somewhere else? We're going to get into that whole idea that maybe frightens some people that are worried about moving from where they are. And we're going to discuss that in some depth as we do with all of our topics. We're going to be going back to that budget often, so let me just give you a little bit more about the budget. It's one thing to talk about what you're going to have to spend money on and how much money you're going to earn in retirement. It's something altogether different if you can actually see it in front of you. Now, you've probably heard that there are lots of people out there saying you need $500,000 to retire or you need $100,000 to retire. That's not necessarily true. Everyone has a different amount that they're going to need, and that's what they think they're going to need today. So without scaring you, the best thing we can do is decide to help build a budget that actually will work. And budgets only work if they're not just wild guesses and estimates. So there's more to it than that. There are details. And our budget tool that we're going to provide to you in this course is designed for you to be able to put in the smallest increments. So let me just start by taking one segment automobiles, transportation, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, things that move, things that require a battery to be charged or fuel to be installed or maintenance or tires, those types of things. Now you can imagine over the years that you've had to replace tires on your cars if you've held them long enough. Uh, that's another thing we're going to talk about in some depth is how long you should Hold your car, your truck, whatever type of vehicle that you have. Uh, it's one thing when you're working and you're making a lot of money to be able to go out and get a car on a whim. It's something different when you're on a fixed income 
and maybe you should be looking at keeping a vehicle for much longer by properly maintaining it. Well, all of that requires the expenditure of money. So can you imagine a one-liner on a budget that says vehicle maintenance? Where do you go from there? What is that all about? So what we're gonna do is in the tool, we list out all the different things you need to do to your vehicle, such as a periodic oil change if you happen to have a gasoline vehicle or a diesel vehicle, how often you're going to have it done, how much that is, how often you have to replace the tires, how much is that, and there, everything is in today's dollars that can be adjusted later on for dollars into the future or can be forecasted into future dollars but we actually put today's dollars in there for everything because we want you to look at this picture as if you're retiring today and you are living on the income and you are spending the money so how can you adjust both of those in order to balance out that's the whole point of the budget but if we start at the smallest number like corporations do and they build up. For example, when McDonald's decides that it's going to sell a hamburger, it has to figure out what it's going to cost for the buns, what it's going to cost for the meat, what it's going to cost for the electricity, for the fryer. All of those things are in calculations that tell them what they need to do to generate a profit. And basically it's the same for a household budget. It's complex. There's lots of moving parts. We want to capture as many of those as possible. And it is possible to capture a large number of them. So let's just replace the guesses with actual facts. If you have a place to put these things, then you can go back and you can fine tune it. You can do some research on what it might cost for a set of tires, for example. And you say that you need to replace the tires at 50,000 miles. How long will it take you to drive 50,000 miles? So you can forecast this and you can put in X dollars per month that have to be reserved for a set of tires, for an oil change, for major maintenance on your vehicle. And then you need to put away funds for those things that happen without any, any notice. For example, you have a blowout in your tire and it's out of warranty and you have to pay for that. So things happen. They happen in life. We want to capture as much as we can because it's very important to help you determine the minimal cost that you're going to have before you start shaving things off that make the quality of life very important to you. We want you to have a great quality of life. And if you're talking about 20 years to retirement, which the average Gen X that's around 50 years old has, you have time to gather the funds to increase your income. We'll get into all of those things with you. And then this budget. So as I said, the budget will track throughout the entire course. But we're going to show you how to use it too. We wouldn't just put it in there. We're going to go through with some examples. We're going to cover not just the budget. We're going to get deep into Social Security. Now, uh, that is one program that I am just astounded for the, the questions that I receive from people that are w reading my blog articles, from people I run into that ask what I think are very simple questions. Often they are answered easily on the internet, but you need to know what those, you know, in other words, if you have a question, you need to know how to ask it properly in order to be able to get a good answer. So the typical kinds of things are how much do I have to make before they start taking out Social Security? Um, when will they stop taking out Social Security? Can I work and draw Social Security without a penalty? And on and on and on. We're going to get into all those, but we're going to get into strategy too in each one of these sections. Remember, this is about strategies. What are the best things for you to do? Now, you're going to have to make some decisions along the way. You don't have to make them today, but you're going to make a list. We're going to help you make a list of things you have to decide. And then we're going to give you some time to decide that. We may well tell you, for example, if you're 64, you have to decide whether you're going to continue to work and be on your employer's uh, medical policy or you're going to take 
Medicare when you're 65. Those are decisions you have to make and there's time frames for those. We're going to lay all of that out. We're going to help you with the actual planning process. So you're going to know everything you need to know about Social Security and all of the options that you have when you go through that particular lesson. We're going to talk about the home ownership, as I also mentioned to you a little bit earlier. We're going to get deep, deep into that. Uh, we're going to talk about numbers. I'm going to give you actual examples of houses and costs and mortgage payments and interest rates and all of those things. Uh, your, those questions such as, do I need to pay my house off before I retire? Big question. All right, we're going to address all of those for you. Uh, you'll be able to answer those with some knowledge. Uh, the 401k is a very important element in a retirement, and so is a Roth IRA. We're going to talk about what it is to have a 401k. I'm going to start from the very beginning with that so you thoroughly understand the point of a 401k, how it is supposed to work, how it works in principle, the, take it advantage of all of the opportunities with a 401k plan and how the Roth IRA works into the whole idea of planning for retirement. So between those plans and some other options on IRAs and on, on 401k types of plans, we're going to cover that in extreme detail. You'll be able to then make some decisions about what you want to invest in those different funds. We're also going to talk to you about something very serious that's going on out there. Um, I'm not going to bring it up here because I think you should go to the course first before you uh, hit this head on with your 401k. So we're going to cover your investments essentially. We're going to uh, have a, a, the equivalent of about two different lessons on investments in 401k and Roth. And then we're going to talk about those of you that might want to uh, get involved in self-employment self when you retire, and those of you that are self-employed today. Now, I have contact with many, many people who are self-employed and have nothing set up for retirement. So we're going to talk about what you need to do to get a self-employment 401k plan going and an IRA plan going and a plan going for your spouse if you're married and get you set up for, and that includes paying into Social Security, get you set up for retirement. That's very important. So we're going to cover that. If you're not self-employed, you might think, well, I'll just kind of ignore that. But you might want to become self-employed after you leave your job and you are, quote, officially retired because self-employment is a viable option to supplement your retirement. And if it looks like it's going to be difficult to make ends meet, you may have to do something else. Also, people plan and they have everything worked out. They've used the budget, for example. It all looks like it's going to work out. And then something happens. Murphy's Law occurs where someone has a medical problem or an issue and you need more money than you had, you may need to generate some income and self-employment is an option. So we're going to talk about those kinds of options in self-employment uh, right now and also in retirement. We're going to cover uh, the second uh, part-time jobs also, uh, things you can do to earn some income. That's part of this will be a separate uh, lesson uh, a lot of people ask, what do I do when I retire? And that leads me into the next lesson that we're going to do, which is what do you do with yourself? Because maybe you don't want to work. Maybe you are thinking about what? You don't know what you want to do. All you know is that you're going to have 20 years with your company or 40 years with your company, and that's time to go. And or you might be forced out or maybe there's some other reasons for you to leave full time employment, go into a hiatus or a retirement, whatever you might want to call it. But basically, at 70 years old, you're eligible for full Social Security. You can do anything you want at that point in time, uh, particularly if you've done all these things ahead of time and you might want to just do something for fun. 
So, but what are those things? So we're going to talk about all of the options that you might want to consider when you're retired. What are you going to do? Sit on the beach all day and have a drink? Or maybe you go and volunteer with the USO at one of the military bases near you. Just to throw that out as an example. Uh, my brother does that and he's retired and he enjoys it a lot because he comes in contact with people especially young people and kids and families and he loves it it uh, it's not a full-time thing for him but he enjoys the time and maybe that's a thing for you or some other things we're going to go into all of that as well and then we're going to talk about your family how do your family members feel about you retiring uh, do they want you to retire um, are they going to be ready for retirement? Because many people that are Gen X's are going to be facing the possibility that those kids that didn't move out of the house at age 27 also didn't learn enough to get a really good job and they're struggling in their 30s and 40s as you are getting into your 70s. And what are you going to do? And we'll talk all about that in the discussion about family. That brings me all the way back to the idea of real estate and possibly moving. You may need to move and leave your family behind. It doesn't mean you'll never see them again. You're going to work out all kinds of ways to do that. But that's one of the connections with family itself. So we want to cover the social aspects. As I said, this isn't just about money. This is about your life it's about your experiences it's about what you want to accomplish we'll be finishing the course as soon as we can and it will be published with several lessons and then we'll be adding other lessons to it we'll let you know each time a lesson comes out to then finally complete the course so if you've signed up for a notification that you would like to know when the course is available and published then please uh, just stand by and we'll contact you as soon as we've got something for you to look at other than just the introduction as we mentioned so, um, you'll be able to come back in and register for the course or enroll in the course and uh, pay the modest fee for that course and as I mentioned once we establish what that is and you actually buy the course, you'll have unlimited use of that course down the road and we'll continue to improve the course. We'll be adding other courses too and if you purchase this course, you'll be entitled to discount on other courses. Now in the interim, if you would like to know more about Generation X Retirement, we have published a series on retirecoast.com of blogs that give you quite a bit of information. It should be thought provoking and um, you need to go to the retirecoast.com website and you'll see all of the articles in our series on Generation X 20 years to retirement. That may help you move along in your thinking and then when you start taking the course we're going to fill in a lot of the blanks that perhaps those individual blogs uh, created in your thinking process. So please come back and uh, check again. If you haven't already put your name in for to be notified, then uh, just do it and we'll let you know as soon as the course is available. Thank you.